Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Guide. You probably heard the business advice that failing to plan is planning to fail. Failing to plan is planning to fail. It's very frequent, very common and very misleading, unfortunately. It really gets us in the wrong direction if we think that planning is just a perfect thing, great thing, good thing. And that's because often our plans fail to survive contact with the enemy. This is a serious issue. So when was the last time you saw a major pl project suffer from a cost of a run or maybe a major time delay? It happens much more frequently when you, than you think. For example, there was a 2002 study of con major construction projects. It found that 86 of major construction projects went over budget. There was another study of major IT project in 2014. It found that 84% of major IT projects went over budget. And of the projects that went over budget in the IT study, they went over budget by more than 180%. It's a lot. Now, such cost overruns can have serious co damage, do serious damage to your bottom line. I mean, they can cost many hundreds of thousands, many millions of dollars, depending on the situation. Now imagine that you know you have a database implementation project, it suffers into a serious cost overrun, and you need to decide to finish it up. Then you take money out of the cybersecurity budget because you need to take the money out of somewhere. And then because you took money out of the, cy out of the cybersecurity budget, you suffer from a serious hack, and that leads to a major PR crisis that's a big, big problem. So there is ongoing rolling problems as a result of cost overruns. It's not just a one-time thing. What happens? Why does it happen? Why do we have so many cost overruns with our plans? Well, because what the research on this topic shows is that when we make plans, strategic plans, or plans for major projects, we tend to think things will go great, things will go perfectly, things will go smoothly. And that is just what our, what our intuitions tell us. That's how we feel. And so we make our projects as though that will be the case, especially if it's a team doing a project. They usually make the plan as though everything will go very smoothly because none of them individually wants to say that, hey, you know, maybe there will be a problem, right? Unless they're encouraged to do so. So this is due to a typical dangerous judgment error, a cognitive bias from which we all suffer called the planning fallacy, where we envision that pl our plans will go according to plan, will go very smoothly. Now, what the way to deal with this planning fallacy, there's a way to deal with it as there is with all other cognitive biases. The way to deal with it is to plan for contingencies very effectively and aggressively in advance. So don't don't just make plans. Don't think that failing to plan is planning to fail have the mental mindset and the organizational policy and the approach, if you're a solopreneur to your individual so entrepreneurship, that failing to plan for problems is planning to fail. Again, failing to plan for problems is planning to fail. We can address the planning fallacy by actually planning around it, by planning for problems. You want to anticipate what kind of problems might come up in advance and decide what strategies you're going to use to address them. You also are not going to always be able to anticipate all the problems and solve them in advance. That means that you need to reserve quite a lot of resources of time, money, social capital, whatever relevant to the project to address the planning fallacy, to address unanticipated threats, as well as take advantage of unanticipated opportunities because you don't want to miss a nose. So let me give you an example of how this would work in reality of, as you deal with the planning fallacy. You want to, as part of dealing with the planning fallacy and addressing threats, try to break down each project into its component parts. For example, there was an IT firm that was struggling with a pattern of taking out projects that ended up losing money for the company in the end. So that's obviously not good. What we evaluated, we I came into the company as a, as a consultant, disaster avoidance experts did, and we looked at the specific components of the plan. We broke it down into it, its parts. We looked down at the specific components of the project, and we found that the biggest anticipated money drain for the company came from permitting the client to make too many final changes in the last stages of the project. As a result, the IT firm changed their project process to not permit that in the future. Another example. Use your past, ex another example where you address the planning fallacy, use your past experience to inform your future activities. 
There was a manufacturing firm in the Midwest, mid-sized manufacturing firm, which did heavy technological projects. Each of its bids on the project was worth, you know, something like in the several millions. So it would bid something like two million for a project, and the project would end up costing three million. It would bid three million, would cost five million, because of the planning fallacy and because people thought that things would go according to plan. They did not take into account previous projects. So what we did, that's actually not that hard of a fix, was to make sure that their future bids on projects always took into account their past project bids and made estimates based on past project bids. And that solved a great deal of the problem. Now, for projects where you have little experience, what you want to make sure to do is get an outside perspective from a source that you can trust and a source that's objective, doesn't have a stake in the game. There was a financial services firm whose CEO was, I was coaching and they needed to move their headquarters. So what I did was I connected this CEO to a number of other CEOs who moved their headquarters, who I was also coaching and had them talk to each other. Now this helped the financial services CEO recognize a number of problems that she wouldn't have recognized if uh, things, if she wasn't connected to these CEOs. For example, there was would be additional expenses to print new collateral materials. There was would be lost employee productivity and just a lot of tensions, conflicts as people were fighting over new offices and stuff like that, that she didn't think about. So that helped her make a much better and more effective plan. So if there's one thing you take away from this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Guide, make sure that you address cost overruns, address the planning fallacy by remembering that failing to plan for problems is planning to fail. Again, failing to plan for problems is planning to fail. As always, this Wise Decision Maker show is based on a blog, on a longer article that has a lot of citations, a lot more information. So check it out. It's linked in the show notes and as a variety, as are a variety of other relevant blogs. What do you think about this episode? Let me know in the show notes. Happy to hear from you. Click like if you like this episode and make sure to share it with others so other people can make more effective plans. Make sure to subscribe and follow the Wise Decision Maker Show. And also check me out, check out the Wise Decision Maker Show on social media. Follow it there. You can learn much more from my book, Never Go With Your Gut, How Pioneering Leaders Make the Best Decisions and Avoid Business Disasters. And of course, you can get the free resource of the Wise Decision Maker course, eight module course, video based course, which has a lot more information on these topics. And it's of course linked in the notes. I hope to see you on the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Until then, the wisest decisions to you, my friends.